Hello, Blue Coat. It's Mr. Harris here, and I'm bringing you our fourth experiment while schools have been closed. So uh, you can see that I'm wearing my lab coat and my goggles again today, just so I don't get. Um, remember, children, these experiments are super simple and they're super safe, but please do ask an adult for permission before. And if you like, it would be even better if they could join in and give you a hand. Right, so I'm going to share my screen now and we'll recap what happened last week. Because to help you with your learning, it's extremely important that you try and recall what you can remember. So, as usual, I want to fill in the gaps from this passage of writing. If you can do it without seeing any of the words, do so first. You can pause now. In a moment, I will reveal the words. So I'll read through the passage of writing. So storm in a glass. The shaving foam acts like a mm, and the water is the sky underneath. The shaving foam can mm the water and food by. When there is too mm water in the shaving foam, it falls out like mm. Okay. Good enough. Now um, reveal some of the words that you could place in there. So the words are precipitation, cloud, store, and, and much. Pause the video now. Have a go at that. Say it out loud. Try and remember it. Okay. So we have got shaving foam acts like a cloud and the water is like the sky underneath. The shaving foam can store the water and food dye. When there is too much water in the shaving foam, it falls out like precipitation or rain, I suppose, in this case. Can you remember the types of precipitation? Precipitation is water that falls from the sky, so you've got a chance to get four points. So pause the video now, you can use the visual to support you there. Okay, so the answers were indeed rain, snow, sleep or hail. Um, and we get all of those in the United Kingdom, really, sometimes on the same day. Right, to today's experiment. And for this, you'll need some ice cubes and an ice cube tray, or at least that to make the ice cubes. Um, really a plate with water would be better than just uh, the, the bowls full with water. Some string or some sewing thread or even a kite string would work quite well in this. Some simple table salt and uh, you could have a small stick which is optional. You might see the theme with the ice fish. Okay so before we start a little bit of science because this is a science experiment and it's good to know what's going on there. Um, Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So that's pretty cold for us children. And at that point, it becomes ice. If you add salt to the water, the temperature for water to freeze go, gets lower. It goes down. Let's see what happens when we add salt to the ice. So before we do that, we will go... Right, we'll stop sharing the screen and we're going to move to the document camera. So hopefully you can see the plate in front of me now. So I'm going to start, children, by just pouring a little bit of water into the plate. But before you do that, you need to get your thread, whatever you've got, your string, your thread, your needle thread, that in the plate, because for this to work, the string needs to be a little bit damp, so I'm going to pour the water. You don't need too much water, just enough so that it's covering the string. Okay, and when that's soaked in there, you'll know that it's a bit wet. And I'm going to get my ice cubes now, which is going to be nice and frozen.
Here's my ice now you take the thread out of the water and put some of your ice cubes on top. Mine are quite small ones, but you might have bigger ones, different ones. I've actually got some that are shaped like the Tottenham Hotspur badge. Right, that should be enough now. And your next challenge is to take your piece of string and to lay it over as many of the cubes as you can. So you can see my piece of thread here. Need to make sure it's pulled out. Sticking to my fingers. Okay. Right, now the next part is the most important part of this experiment. This is where your salt is used. Okay, now carefully using the salt, you need to pour it over the ice cubes. Not too much. What's this doing? Well, we'll talk about that afterwards. Now, the next part of course, you need to wait 10 seconds, 10 seconds before we do anything. So, I'm going to count 10, 1 and 2 and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. Okay, next step, this is the part where you go fishing. With your thread, you need to see how many of the ice cubes have stuck to your thread. And it looks like I have to catch only one. Okay, can you see that dangling there? On the end of my thread. I'm going to pop that down now. Okay, let's talk about how that works. I'm going to share my screen again. Screen. Okay, so oh, we missed a prediction. So what's going on here? Um, as we said before, putting salt on the ice causes the ice to melt and turn some of the ice cube into water. This is because the salt has lowered the freezing point, which was degrees Celsius. A little pool of water forms on top of the ice cube and the string sinks into the water. As the ice cube melts, it mixes the salt water with the normal water and the freezing point starts to go back up again to zero degrees. When this happens, the ice or the water refreezes, trapping the string inside. This means you can lift the string, taking the ice with it. So it'd be great if you could have a go at that, children. You uh, would probably be able to catch more than one ice cube like I have. Um, there's some different things you could do. 
as I said, what's the record for how many you can catch? Could you use something other than salt to lower the freezing point? You could try flour, sugar or pepper. We'd love to see your photos of this. If you could send them into your year group emails, that would be fantastic. OK, I'm going to shut this video down now. Hope you enjoyed the science lesson. Thanks. Bye.